$102,878 is the average salary of a mechanical engineer in 2025. But what do mechanical engineers actually do? If you're new here, hi, my name is Abbas. I'm a full-time mechanical engineer and I have a master's degree in mechanical engineering. Now, before I got into this field, I had the exact same question. Mechanical engineering felt like a black box. I basically pictured someone in a workshop all day tinkering with machines or engines but little did i know that there's actually way more to it than just you know turning wrenches and drawing blueprints and in this video i'm going to be breaking down what exactly a mechanical engineer really does on the job you know why i went into mechanical engineering and the perks that i enjoy as a full-time mechanical engineer but first of all let's talk about the responsibilities of a mechanical engineer the first place to start is design yes we do a lot of design work although not always in the way that people imagine now what do we actually build or design in many cases we're responsible for things like conceptualizing modeling and refining physical products and that could be something as small as a specialized component in a smartwatch or as large as an electric vehicle so depending on your team you might be designing parts for an electric car you know figuring out how to efficiently cool a data center or you know, working on a robotic arm for a manufacturing line. And we use CAD software to model 3D components and then we run simulations. We create the drawings basically that a manufacturer will use to actually build the parts. Now that might sound straightforward, but it's actually a lot of iterative work. You know, you design, you test, you revise, you repeat. And it's not just about a single part, it's about understanding how every part interacts together within a broader system. So imagine designing the, a suspension system, for example, of a cutting edge electric SUV. You're thinking about how it holds the vehicle's weight, how it reacts to bumps when you're driving, you know, how it integrates with like the braking system, and even how it affects aerodynamic forces. In other words, mechanical engineers work at both the macro and the micro level, you know, seeing the big picture while also obsessing over very tiny, small details. But the job goes way beyond sketching a part in CAD, which brings us to the second step, which is analysis. See, once you've drafted the design on your computer, you need to make sure that it actually holds up in the real world. You know, will it survive extreme conditions like heat, cold, vibrations? And today we often use like advanced simulation software to, you know, run things like stress analysis or fluid flow analysis. For example, if you're developing like a turbine blade for a wind farm, you're not just testing if you can spin in the wind, right? You're testing if you can handle like 25 years of storms, temperature swings, random debris hits without failing. And the analysis phase can take longer than the design phase itself because real world reliability is actually a non-negotiable. This is where engineering math and physics really come into play. You know, stuff like the things that you learn at university, fluid dynamics, material science, thermodynamics. If you don't properly analyze your design, then you're basically risking failures that can be extremely costly or even dangerous. And then there's physical testing. See, testing is a huge part of our job. If you don't thoroughly test, then things can fail spectacularly. Think of a car crash, for example, right? A car crash test. Engineers are making sure that the vehicle's mechanical systems behave as expected under very extreme conditions. So no matter how powerful our simulations get, we always have to validate uh, you know, crucial components in a lab or on a test track. So if you're in robotics, for example, then you might put your prototype through repetitive stress tests to you know, ensure like hopefully they don't seize up after a certain number of cycles. And if you're into aerospace, for example, then you might be testing you know, high temperature alloys in a wind tunnel setting that replicates supersonic speeds. Basically, testing is a huge portion of the day to day. And it's not just about pushing your product to its limits. It's about discovering its weak points and then figuring out how to make them stronger or more efficient. 
And then there's maintenance and continuous innovation. See, mechanical systems don't always stay static. Someone has to keep them running smoothly and figure out how to make them better over time. Like, for example, a car might need updates to its design as new safety regulations you know, come out. Or, for example, a power plant might require retrofits to meet you know, new efficiency standards. It's a balancing act between finding what's in front of you and finding ways to push the design further. Because as the world transitions to like new tech, like electric vehicles or renewable energy systems, mechanical engineers have to find ways to integrate fresh ideas while keeping existing infrastructure reliable. And then the next responsibility is, you know, architecting the solution, basically figuring out exactly how each part of the design will fit together and function together, you know, before anything is physically produced. For instance, if you're creating a 3D model of a new consumer product, I don't know, let's say like a smart kitchen appliance, for example, right? Then you're going to have to decide on the overall shape. You'll outline how the internal components fit together. You'll specify material thicknesses, and then you'll plan the assembly sequence. You'll typically map this all out in a clear visual format so that everyone, you know, like manufacturing teams, uh, product managers, suppliers, they can all see how it all works and functions together. And then once that blueprint is agreed upon, then you can move on to the detailed calculations and prototyping. Now, unlike software where you can, you know, just tweak lines of code, physical parts can be costly or time consuming to revise, right? So it's crucial to get the conceptual design ironed out early on in the design phase. And then another part of the mechanical engineer's life is on-call support. Yes, you might think that that's just for tech support or software, but mechanical engineers often have to jump in at weird hours if, you know, something critical breaks. So picture this, right? You've designed a cooling system for a large data center. If a major HVAC component fails at 3 a.m., you might get a call to help troubleshoot, right? Because if those servers overheat, we're talking a catastrophic data loss or major outages. This can be stressful, but then it's also exhilarating that knowing that you're the go-to person when the stakes are very high. Now, of course, you know, you might only be on call like a couple of times a year, depending on your company or the team that you're part of, but it's definitely a responsibility that catches a lot of new mechanical engineers by surprise. See, the amazing thing about mechanical engineering is the global impact that it has. As a mechanical engineer, you're not just helping one person at a time, right? You're potentially affecting entire cities or industries. You know, maybe you design a more fuel efficient engine that reduces emissions for thousands of vehicles, or maybe you help a manufacturing process to be safer, right? Protecting hundreds of workers. And it feels incredible to know that something that you've designed or optimized can be scaled all over the world and improve countless of lives. Anyway, if you're curious about a more in-depth of why I chose this engineering field, then let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to make a video about it in the future. And then lastly, I want to mention the perks that I enjoy as a full-time mechanical engineer. Because yes, the responsibilities can be very demanding, but then there's definitely a lot of benefits that you can get as well as a mechanical engineer, right? So as I said before, you know, the average salary of a mechanical engineer is just a little bit more than $100,000 in 2025. But depending on your experience and the industry that you're in, like for example, aerospace or you know, renewable energy, it can go much higher as well. You know, many companies also offer benefits like you know, a 401k matching, uh, health insurance, and sometimes even tuition reimbursements if you decide to pursue further education. And then there's also a decent chance that you get to travel to supplier sites or manufacturing plants. And if you work for like a global company, you might even get to see different parts of the world, right? Some of my friends, for example, are able to work flexible hours or they do hybrid remote setups, especially if they do more CAD work than on-site lab work. Anyway, I hope this video gave you a better understanding and idea of what a mechanical engineer actually does. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.